Hi, my name is R. Blank, and I run SYB. Inspired by the life's work of my father, Dr. Martin Blank, one of the world's leading EMF scientists, it's my company's mission to help you shield your body from harmful EMF radiation and make technology safer for you to use and enjoy. In this video, I want to talk about a condition called electromagnetic hypersensitivity, or EHS. And if you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe to this channel. EHS, also sometimes known as electromagnetic illness, can be a bit of a controversial topic in the field of medicine. But for those who suffer from it, it's very real, and it's becoming more widespread. Dr. Magda Havas, an expert in EMF science, believes that 3% of the population has severe symptoms and that 35% of the population have mild to moderate symptoms. So what exactly is EHS? EHS is a collection of symptoms believed to result from exposure to EMF radiation. Those symptoms vary, but may include headaches, fatigue, sleep disturbances, skin rashes, muscle aches, nausea, and more. For some people, the symptoms are mild. Others suffer to an extreme degree and find themselves unable to function in modern society. One way to think of EHS is like an allergy. Imagine if instead of being allergic to pollen or peanuts, you were allergic to Wi-Fi. That's what electrosensitivity is. The body reacts very negatively to the invisible force of electromagnetic radiation. Interestingly, while EHS may be a new term, the condition itself has been recognized in literature for over half a century. With the development of radar during World War II, Soviet researchers reported that individuals exposed to microwaves frequently developed health issues like headaches, fatigue, memory loss, and more. These are some of the same symptoms commonly reported by EHS sufferers. In other words, it's been known for a long time that electromagnetic fields can and do make people ill, even at intensities much lower than those considered to be safe by regulatory bodies like the FCC. Now these days, we're constantly exposed to electromagnetic radiation, day in and day out. It's not just the cell phones in our pockets, it's everywhere in our environment. For sufferers of EHS, that presents a problem. There's simply no way to escape it. It also makes researching and testing the cause of EHS symptoms very difficult. Still, the body of scientific research demonstrating that EHS is a real medical condition does exist and is growing. For example, a 2017 study looked at the brain MRIs of 10 patients who claimed to suffer from EHS. All 10 had abnormal brain scans. What's more, the abnormalities were consistent and similar across all 10 patients. And a 2012 review of scientific literature found that pathophysiological change was evident in some EHS sufferers. In other words, EHS results in measurable changes to people's bodies. Despite these and other examples, electromagnetic illness is not formally recognized as a disease in most countries, at least not at a national level. There are a few exceptions. Austria has formal guidelines for the diagnosis and treatment of EHS. And in Sweden, EHS is formally recognized as a functional impairment. Recognition of EHS is growing at other levels. In 2021, the California Appellate Court acknowledged that Wi-Fi sickness is a real disability and employers must provide necessary accommodation to those with the condition. And a number of hospitals and research centers around the world, like the Women's College Hospital in Toronto and the Environmental Health Center in Dallas, provide electrohypersensitivity diagnoses and support. And in the United States, EHS now has its own ICD-10 billing code that can be used for health insurance purposes. If you are experiencing a range of unexplained health issues that seem to appear or get worse in the presence of electromagnetic fields, whether it's a cell phone tower, office Wi-Fi, or simply the mounting number of wireless devices in every home, it may be time to seek diagnosis. Or at the very least, you can start by taking some measures to lessen your EMF exposure. For more information about how to reduce your exposure to EMF radiation for free, be sure to download my free guide at shieldyourbody.com or click the link in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.